and pursuant to just pursuant to the law and determination that attendance by remote means is um, necessary because in-person meeting is not prudent under COVID-19 conditions. Uh, this meeting will be televised, or excuse me, conducted via uh, video conference. Uh, the meeting is also being recorded. So let's start with our, our minutes. Um, let's pull up our minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes? All right. Yes, uh, George. One, one, one correction. In my version of the minutes, it said that the um, farmer's market starts on June 6th, Sunday. I think it's June 5th, Sunday. Sixth is a Monday. Farmer market. Okay, great. Any more corrections? All right, well, the minutes are accepted as corrected. Thank you, Raymond. Uh, this is our, our time for comments from the floor. So this is where our guests get to talk for a few minutes about anything that's on their mind that they came to talk about today. Um, don't hold your comments to the end. This may be your only opportunity. So um, if you guys have something to say, let's, let's talk. But it looks like uh, no comments from the crowd. Once, twice, three times. Okay, let's move on to financials. Um, Isaac is not with us. Rod, do you want to step in and, and show us a monthly financial report? Yeah. Also, Isaac is not with us today. Um, his wife took him on an emergency vacation for his birthday he didn't know about. Surprise. Mm -hmm. So he's not going to be with us today. I apologize. For that. But Rod and I got it. Okay. Let me grab the financials real fast. Diane, I wish somebody would sweep me away this coming Friday. <laughs> right, me too. Yeah. Okay. He didn't even know where they were going. I know this is off, should not be, but that's all I'm going to say. It's exciting. Fabulous. That's fabulous. I'll be cleaning my house. Let's <laughs> make sure I have the... Uh... Okay, can everyone see? It's kind of small, Rod. Yes, okay. there you go. Okay, um, as best I can, I will go over uh, the financials. We're looking at the 2022 versus 2021. Um, for the current assets, we're looking at the uh, bank account and the SSA checking for this year. We are at um, 166.411, and that's up about 246 from 21. The accounts receivable, um, our accounts receivable is at 294.476. And that's up uh, quite a bit over 2021. At this point, we were at 159.45. So our total assets for 2022 are at $460,887. Um, as opposed to 2021, we were at $317.110. So our change is $143,777. Our liabilities um, from the line items, our current line bill, our current um, liabilities, our accounts payable, 
At this point, we're at 19,672. From last year, we were at 7,315. Uh, 7, so our accounts payable are higher this year by $12,357. Our defer deferred revenue is 272,688. Uh, we're a little bit above last year at 26476. And due to the SECC, at this point this year, it's 4,341. This time last year, we were at $13,023. So our total liabilities are $296,702. Uh, this time last year, we were at 280, 814,000. So our total liabilities is up $15,888. Um, our net assets, temporary restricted are 65,375 versus this time last year, 78,600. 65. Our net surplus is $98,811. This time last year, we were at a minus $42,369. So our total assets for this year is $164,186 versus $36,296. So our total liabilities and assets. Um, Balance back to 460,887 versus 2021, 317,110 dollars. And that's a um, significant increase from overall of about 143,777 dollars. Now I'll answer any questions as best I can on this. So are there any questions on this? Okay, I'll make this larger. Come on out of the way. I know why I'm sharing. Forgive me for a second, the uh, I'm just trying to get Zoom to um, let me try this again. Let me do a screen share because it's not, it's right in front of my um, thing to make this larger. Okay, let's share this. Thank you for moving. Okay, is this large enough for everyone to see? Can everyone see sure. my screen? Okay. Yes. You're cut off towards the right, but we'll. Okay, we'll see and it. that's fine. I'll I'll scroll it. Um, now this is a report. Of, I actually like this report because what it does is it goes down our um, line items. And it tells us exactly where we are. And so what I'll do is instead of going through the individual ones, is I'll go through our um, categories. So we talk about um, revenue to date. So our actual, we, um, we don't have any disbursements at this point uh, because we already uh, been dispersed those funds, but we have a budget number of 24,645. So we see the difference here. Uh, the meat of this to me is when we get into our line items and it's where are we month to date? So basically what we projected we would spend in customer attraction, what we've actually spent and what's the difference. So we project we actually spent 6,500 
for this month. We projected we would spend 7,833. So we've come under by $1,333. Same here, I'm just gonna make this slightly larger if I can. Oops. Excuse me a moment. We make it just a little bit larger so it's easier to see. Okay, our 2.0 public way aesthetics, we projected that we, I'm sorry, we spent $2,762 and projected we would spend 9,073 and we've come under seven of oh, 6,411. For 3.0, um, we didn't spend anything. We projected we would spend $1,354. So we came in under that amount. Rod, Rod yes. could, I inter could I interject here that that C column really is, is sort of misleading because we did not necessarily project that that's how much we would spend in this one month. That's right. like an average of the total budget over the 12 month period. So it, does, it doesn't really quite reflect. Well. Yeah, it's kind of an accrued counting, so it's monthly, you know. Okay, like, all right, would it be better? Year to date to get a big picture. Right, and that's what I was gonna ask. Would it be better if I just went through year to date? Cause I wasn't gonna go through all of them. I was just gonna go through a monthly and go straight to year to date. So is it okay if I just go straight to year to date? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is where we are budget wise. So our year to date budget is um, what we said we were gonna receive so far and the year to date difference is, is $49,000. Our total budget. E. I'm sorry? We need to see E, the E column. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I need to. Well, this is a new format. This was the first time I'd ever seen this format. So it's going to take some getting used to. So, um, right. Yes, because we had asked Isaac to kind of build it out a little bit more with month, year, and total, and what remains. And so now it's new. So it might take us all a little bit of time to, you know, grab see this new one, new style. But I think it lays it out better. Right. It it for me it lays it out a lot better because it goes down the line items. When I get used to this, I'll be able to just well. Let me see if I can hide these, just go ahead and hide them. I can do that fairly quickly. Oh, let me not worry about that for now. But for me, this is a nice tool because what it does is all the columns in A, it just lays them all out. Where do we spend money? You know, what are some of the things that we have in some of the line items? And I can look at it from a month to date and I can look at it from a year to date. And this complements the budget tracker is as well because when this is presented, it gives us an idea of, of where we are in the month. And in particular, we're looking at the delayed assessments. So with the delayed assessments, we really have to keep an eye on what we have already committed to spend. And I'll just go down to, um, our, um, customer attraction because that's our largest one. So we have garbage removal and I'll go back through here a little bit, but garbage removal and we have the power washing that's under here. And those are committed contracts. This one, I promise you, I'll present a lot better next time, or Isaac will present this if he's here. But it's real important to know what the year to date, the, the budget, 
and the remaining budget that we have on that because we've committed that money. So knowing that that contract we, um, comes in at about $34,000 here um, and we have 23,000 left and we've spent this much so far, this is where this document really helps me in terms of controlling the cost and anticipating what we might spend and where we might go over budget and things we can do in other parts of the budget. Um, forgive me for being clumsy about this, but I'm gonna try and make this as, as easy as I can and go as, as fast as we can. So I think we covered the uh, 3.0. Um, 4.0, I'm gonna go over some columns and highlight those. But these are the year to dates and the remaining budgets. So we really haven't done anything with 4.0. This is where we're going to do the reconstitution work. And that's going to come up fairly soon. So we haven't spent anything there and we haven't um, generated anything there. Um, our total safety programs, those tend to happen later in the year. So that money is still available um, year to date and remaining. Um, total management, we've become, we've begun to spend money there on a faster clip. And most of that to do, whoops, nope. That's the next one. But management, you know, we're spending money. These are a lot of the fixed and just a few of the variable ones. So things like rent and uh, things like that that are fixed costs, some of the office costs, you're gonna see these pretty much regular on a regular basis. And personnel, you're gonna see that move up at a faster clip. And in large part, that's due to me being here. So I know I was a little clumsy about this, but are there any questions about this? And as George and Diane have stated, this is a new tool, but for me, this is a particularly useful tool because it lists all of our charge items and where we are, whether it's in the month, in the year, and a remaining difference. So I, I, I really love this one. Okay. Come on, move. Yeah, and we don't go through the detail unless okay. there are questions. Okay. But everyone has this in their email. So if they wanted to dig deeper or attend our next finance committee meeting, which is the third Tuesday of every month at noon, we'd love to have you. Okay. Well, any questions on this so far? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you all for being patient. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. We're going to get back to you in one minute, so don't go anywhere. Um, George, are you able to speak to the budget tracker for a moment? Sure. sure. Um, let me share my screen, switch over. So um, the budget tracker does reflect the numbers that Rod just presented in our in um, our financial report. It's it's pretty much the same down to the dollar. So Isaac and I work together to make sure that we come out with exactly the same month, uh, the same amounts on the bottom line. Uh, April was a very quiet month. There was very little activity, as you can see. This does the budget tracker does break it down month by month by month, and then we have a cumulative total over here as a guest of the budget, what percentage, and you can see that we've spent very little of percent, percent wise of most of our budgeted items. Zero percent, zero percent, zero percent. We know that will change over time, uh, that we do get busier during the summer. The most important part is the bottom line. Um, sitting down here at the very end where we see that we have 49,000, $647 worth of total expenses year to date out of a budget of 348. And that means that we've spent 14% of what we're budgeted for. We, we all have agreed to be very conservative because of the tax collection issues this year. Um, and because of that, we're anticipating how to go into spend down mode later in the year so that um, we do not end up with unspent funds 
when our year ends. So we still have 85% of our budget to spend almost $300,000 worth. But as Rod pointed out, a lot of that will have to go into contracts and it's all dependent on when the levy is delivered. So and also is. keep in mind that we can still carry over any funds from 2021 in the event that we do, I believe with our um, 2023 work plan that we're gonna share today, we do um, have a carryover that we're holding for the reconstitution. So any questions about the budget tracker? Well, one comment, George, is this has been an excellent tool to forecast. Yes. Um, because I've used it to put numbers in, in particular our contracts. And our partners have kind of raised prices. So it's been good to see uh, once we sign those contracts, what the numbers are gonna look like in December. Yeah, and the only issue we always have to be careful of with the budget tracker is that anytime we submit budget modifications, we've got to remember to come in here and change the actual numbers <laughs> so that it reflects what we're actually budgeted, not what we're budgeting this month, but long-term, how our budget's going to go. Thank you. Diane, are you, um, you up? You ready? Yes, actually Rod is gonna walk us through it, but I'm going to assist. Um, we are, our agenda item that got added that was shared with everyone yesterday is our 2023 work plan budget draft. Um, it is due to the city on June 3rd. And so we do have our draft today that we are going to present that we shared um, for approval to then be shared with the city. Now the final is not due until July 15th. So between now and July 15th, as my, you know, I sent in the email yesterday, is that what will happen is that the city will review, we will get the EAV number and levy number that we will then enter into that budget and make sure it ma everything matches, and make any modification. Uh, we will bring it back to this group. So we may have a, um, at the end of June, uh, we will then approve the final and that way we can upload it to the city. And in the event, we have all of the things that we get back. If we don't have that back, then we will have to have a special meeting for review of the final. So Rod, take it away. Okay. Okay, everyone can see this. One of the things I have to say to Diane is, while it's not always comfortable, I appreciate her taking off the training wheels and letting me dive headfirst into the budget. So while she keeps me from falling all the way over, she's given me just a lot of, 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 of space to try and really learn what our budget is made of and, and how to carry it forward. So this is generally the first- Can you make it just a little smaller, Rod? Okay. You see the full, maybe like, yeah, I don't know. Ah, okay. Give me a moment. I'm gonna have to let this- For the view. Thing with. I've got to get this um, in Zoom. It starts to pull your stuff up where it pulls its menu down and it's right over your, um, that's better. Cool bar. Great. I hate that. Here we go. Thank okay. you. Okay. So this is the first page. Um, due to the time, I'm gonna try and go through this quickly, but not try to leave out any detail. So, we went through this and, and filled out the detail. So this is the summary page of all of the things we just initially planned on spending on. Uh, most of these categories are lower. Uh, for instance, um, customer traction is lower. We had a website in there that we have already completed. So that number, we, we could make that a little bit lower. 
um, sustainability. There were some things that we wanted to cover, um, but we were able to make that number lower. Um, safety was down. We're not going to do as, as many things, and I'll get into some of the detail on that. Office management, um, that's down. Some of this um, we have to be a little careful with. Um, the public way is up a little bit, but we also have to remember that inflation is running rampant. So some of our vendors may go up, some of the things that we purchase, those prices may go up. So we tried to be conservative and careful about this, but we're also mindful that inflation may come back to bite us. Um, with that said, we were able to get this um, pretty much close to where we had it for 2023. I'm sorry, for 2022. So you can see the overview is here and we don't have the um, EAV and some of the other numbers we're gonna use. Uh, so we should be getting that uh, probably within the next several weeks to make sure that we can finalize this budget more precisely. And so just it's mindful for all of the commissioners to note that we are instructed by the city to use our levy amount from 2022 or the how our work plan was. So I guess it's the levy amount from 2021, which goes to 2022. We're using the same one until we get it updated. Okay. So I have a question. So um, this is the 2023 budget, um, but it looks like it says 2020. Oh, I see up there. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Okay, yeah. This is a template that I downloaded from SharePoint from the city to start this process. Karen, did you have a question? You're a liaison, and so what is your question? Just a, um, a statement um, that may be beneficial. Okay. If we can go back to the budget. Summary? Yes. Okay. Um, so I just recently sent you all the late and lost collection number um, that you'll want to insert. And Diane, you know those numbers are the numbers that kind of pad, George, you know, pad the budget in the event that somebody doesn't pay their tax, that you don't overspend. Or if some, if you catch a windfall and somebody does pay their tax, that you then don't have to go back to city council in order to get approval to spend that money. So, um, Rod, I sent that, I want to say last week. And then the other thing, and we're not going to talk about this a whole lot because Diane will process this a little bit more. You guys are getting a significant tip rebate. And I sent you that number. So when you have a significant TIF rebate, it gives you a lot of capability in your budget. Um, and so you'll want to have a conversation, Diane, with the commissioners about that significant TIF rebate that you guys are getting. That's all I'm gonna say about okay. that significant <laughs> number. Okay, thank you. Yes, so we did get notification from the city. Um, I, we were planning on sharing with the commissioners, so thank you, Karen. We weren't sure how if we were supposed to add that into this draft, and because we didn't have any really clear instructions on how that is, but we did get the numbers. So that's good to know. So there is a late loss collection of some $1,500 um, that we got, but our TIF rebate, we weren't exactly sure how it was going to be awarded, allocated, um, is quite significant. Rod, do you have that number off the top of your screen? Um, we just some, got notifications, so right. make sure we do it right. The number is roughly about $167,000. Yay. Yeah, I don't have it all the way down okay, to, the, to the dollar. Thanks, Karen. Yeah. Diane, do you mind explaining to the um, new commissioners why what, what this TIF rebate is? Why we're getting it? I I'm almost certain George might be able to do okay. better than me, but um, I'll try. So my understanding is that in past years, um, you know, whenever there is a TIF surplus, there is a percent 
that would go to that SSA. So it would be the 53rd Street TIF that the SSA would be due a rebate. In the past several years, the SSA 61 did not get a TIF rebate. But what we did was we worked with our local elected officials to question why we weren't, we never got a TIF rebate. But, and so they made sure for some, I, my understanding is now, if there is a TIF rebate, we do, we will get a disbursement. Is that correct, Karen and George? If, if there is a TIF surplus declared, and apparently the 53rd Street TIF has had a, a, a surplus declared. Prentice, I see, has joined us this morning. He may be able to shed some additional light on this, but um, when there is a, a TIF surplus declared, then the rebate does go into effect. And since we think that's the case with this, um, finally we'll be getting some of those TIF funds that we have been begging for for eight years. So it's, it's a really good um, blessing to come in, in as a surprise. It, it is. And part of that, um, since I go back way back to 30 some years ago, um, when the university was developing um, with the city of Chicago, some of the area, this, there was an agreement made that surplus would go to back, back to the developer, if you will. And so that was the reason why there wasn't one. It's not something that just generally happens, but there was a uh, redevelopment area agreement that was in place when the development began with the city of Chicago and the university. So now my understanding is that agreement is now over. And so anytime you have an SSA and a TIF, they kind of don't marry well because they both operate off of increment. And so um, we had the situation where your SSA funding was being absorbed by the TIF, some of it was. And so uh, fast forward, the agreement with the university is now gone. Um, we have some policies now in place to try to marry those two programs where we didn't have it before. And so we began issuing rebates several years ago, incrementally. Um, as far as the question, Diana, or you guys and Rod asked about when, um, didn't have an answer for that because we don't know exactly when those funds will be transferred from the county to us. So I didn't want to give you a false number, yes. but I did make a comment that you have to allocate for them in tabs one through five. And um, I said six and seven, you can't use those, that, those rebates or excuse me, that um, funding for SSA management or personnel. So if you've got some programs or some services that you really want to dig in, you can use, you can allocate them here um, and uh, you'll get statements that will come in to exactly when those funds will be deposited into the account. That's really great. Just really great. It is. Yes. It is. So we've been on sharing this exciting news <laughs> since we're here and we weren't sure to add it into the 20. So it should be allocated for the 2023 work plan. Even if we get it this, yep. it will be used for next year, right? Is what you're saying, Karen? Yep. yep. And you've been, we didn't and know you just that. allocating, right. You're allocating okay. across the five categories. Um, and then your late and lost collection is your protection. You know, the, uh-oh, didn't happen, or uh-oh. Um, but the TIF dollars, you don't have to worry about those because they're already in. Okay. Karen, Karen, let me make the distinction. So this gets allocated in the 2023 budget. Um, but and it's in the, here. Right. Right, so correct. For, for the 2022 budget, we are still kind of in a holding pattern for the assessor's funds to come in. Yeah, when folks pay their taxes, you know, that's always the issue is, you know, and I think you guys did trickles is what I was told. Um, they don't hold it just in March and what's the other date that we pay taxes? Like August? Right, my understanding is that you guys constantly get trickles whenever somebody decides to pay their taxes. Right. You know? Right. County sent it to the treasurer and they deposited it to the So, yeah, just to re reiterate what, what Diane 
was saying earlier. So the TIF funds would go, we would allocate that in the 2023 budget, not the 2022 budget. Correct. Okay. All right, that's fantastic. Yay. And so we've yep. been sharing this excellent news, but we also then have a lot of planning to do for next year and where we want these yep. funds to go. Now, what we can do for the budget draft is, you know, come up with a tentative areas where we would like to put those funds. And that way for the final, which this group will approve in June, then we'll know how that's going to be spent. And then also, as we discuss about spending for 2022, I want to remind commissioners that we, we don't spend what we don't collect. So that's why this year is a little bit different. As we all have experienced, every year is a little different, right? So we don't spend what we don't collect. So that's why we're being frugal. But we know in 2023, we will have the TIF. So that's exciting. Congratulations to this group. That's awesome. Um, Greg? Okay, I'm, I'm, tell me where, okay, is this following statement correct? Um, the TIF and the SSA footprints overlap each other and the, S, and, the, and the TIF supersedes the SSA. So the money for that section that overlapped, um, it, it was all going to the to TIF, but now that the TIF's fully funded that money and our footprint now goes to the SSA. We, right, right so far? Not, but not all of it. Though. Not we all of it, right, a portion. Some money. Yeah. Okay. okay. And it, that, that number you just quoted, does that take us back like for the last year or is that, would we ever see money from prior years or it only goes back one year? Well, I don't know how many years, but you had an agreement again, as I stated before, you had an agreement in place with the university where, where the city and the university were developing. So increment was going to the university as a part of that agreement. Now, I can't tell you the, the term of that agreement because I didn't work on that. That's in our economic um, development. I, I guess my question is, according to that agreement, does that number um, catch us up for all time for the last eight years? No. And, and again, I don't know the terms you don't of know. that okay. agreement um, yes. because that's outside the confines of SSA. Yes. So, and we were informed that we could not collect right. a past rebate. Right. Right. So, okay. And, and that far back because the TIF was in a deficit. For so many years, but that's when, if you all re recollect a couple years ago, we realized the TIF now is in a surplus and it's possible that SAC 61, um, there was like a, you know, $1.3 million that could have been allocated to SSA 61, but through all of our research and processes, we were informed that no, we cannot pass collect, but now moving forward, working with Alderman King's office and DPD that we would if there was a TIF surplus, we would then be eligible for a rebate. And, and so that, if you go back, it finally our, happened. <laughs> if you go back and look at our organizational documentation from when the SSA was first set up, that amount really is consistent with the percentage that we would expect of our budget for one year. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm pretty confident that that's one year's worth of TIF yep. property taxes coming back to us. Okay, and if I were to stack good news on top of good news. The TIF expires soon. I forget the date, like a year or something. And as mm -hmm. soon as it expires, the entire amount that we overlap will, will go into the SSA. So our budget then almost doubles. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't know if we should, we really shouldn't have TIF conversations in this SSA meeting because it's up to... <laughs> um, if the TIF expires. officials... Right, because some yes. a lot of times folks want that funding strip in there. That's what TIF was developed for to provide funding to to stimulate economic development. So that's going to be a question in the elected officials' office as to whether or not that TIF is um, re upped, wow. reapplied for. You know what happens with that. So we can't really say um, as an SSA that we'll get full amounts um, to cross that bridge when we get to it. So. Well, 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 Karen, I have this question. That's also a function of what we determine our levy is going to be. So, so um, your levy amount is, yes. Well, right, the that's- EAV, yes. Right. The EAV, uh, I keep scrolling like I'm controlling. Yes. <laughs> Let me go down. Correct. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. 
So did you start right, your so. 2020? Did you put your 2020, the current EAV? It looks like you didn't. So that'll help you to make some right. determinations. If you take that current EAV um, that's in your 2022 budget and plug it into this formula, that'll okay. help you um, move along to see. <clears throat> Right. Yeah. But those are things. Yeah. We end up determining what that money is. You can see me circling that down here mm -hmm. where the EAV and the authorized cap rate. Yeah. So it's not like the money just immediately comes. We have to take a look and say, how much are we going to tax people or add that, that assessment? Okay. Put the numbers in the chat, George, and for everyone, just the numbers. So now that we know what we're supposed to do <laughs> and how we're supposed, what year we're supposed to put this in, um, we will update the work plan draft. Um, so for the discussion of this meeting, Rod, do you wanna just go directly to some of the categories? Um, not the overview summary because right. we update the summary and all of those narratives and things but let's go to the lines and then let's talk about process for this group. Um, because we have the draft is due June 3rd, how do we want to, where do we want to use those funds? Do we, for this, for the draft, but for the final as well, right? Like we can have, this is not the final, this is just a draft. Okay. Am I making sense, Greg? Like what I think we need to do? Sure. You want to show us the draft changes. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Let me. Can everyone see this? Yes. Okay. So we're looking at the lines, and, and these are lines that we've had in the past. Let me see if I can get all of this. This is not easy. I'll just go through quickly some of the categories very quickly. Like we've had the monitoring and the maintenance of the website. We had a new one, so that's why this category is down. Um, we're down in uh, sponsorships uh, and things we're going to do in terms of uh, di direct marketing. Um, the Instagram and Facebook page monitoring that kind of stayed the same. Um, the banners we're just going to replace as needed. Um, the annual report is the annual report. Um, the branding, we're, we're down in that. And the farmer's market, we expect for it to begin to support itself. Now, the numbers we need to revise is our goal. Um, I just plugged those in, um, but we looked at the financials first. And in this category, we're down almost 45% where we were the, the current year. Uh, where is that? Just try and make this a little bit larger. Let's see if I can. Okay, I'm not trying to change it. I'm just trying to make this larger. And it seems that I can't make the text is as large. You all forgive me on this one. I, I wouldn't um, worry about it, Rod. Yeah. We, all, we all have the original. Okay, you all have copies of it. You can see it. But if it, I'll, I'll just highlight some of the ones um where we're we're going down in and this is kind of like the uh facade the um garbage can maintenance and the uh viaduct repairs and upgrade we kind of went up in that category and 
you all are familiar with this. They flag in yellow when we go 25% one way or the other. Um, bike racks we went down in and park improvement landscaping. Um, the other one, this is four where we're looking at uh, reconstitution. Um, public safety, we kind of reduced a little bit there. Um, SSA management, uh, we reduced in a couple of categories. Many of these are fixed expenses, rent. Um, the SECC has been really nice and good and, and not really gone up on stuff. Um, personnel, this is Raymond and me, and the important number to remember is where we are in terms of the amount of the budget levy. Uh, budget, uh, the levy. We can never go above 30%. And that pretty much is all of the numbers for this. Is there any questions about this? We all have a copy of this. Um, it's something definitely we're going to change given the fact that we have the um, clarity if money. Mm -hmm. And clarity and how it's where it get, how it gets budgeted. Right, right. And, and clarity. Um, so is there any questions on this? Yeah, how is that going to be decided? Who's going to decide where the TIF funds gets plugged in? This group. Right. When? I mean, it has to be uploaded June 3rd, so that's soon. <laughs> I will say this, um, and I don't know if this has changed around here, but typically the department has asked for it to be used in infrastructure improvements. Now, of course, we are still in the pandemic. Um, and of course, we're still in a morale boosting era, if you will. Um, so I would say you all should make some suggestions. Um, again, you can't use it in tab six and seven, but um, I'm sure Diane's gonna come up with some ideas and then they can email them to me so I can see if I can get approval to use them outside of the protocol that the city has established, which has always been infrastructure improvements. Because usually that the very expensive category. Um, and remember, you've got to use them, Diane, because uh, this whole thing about the 25% carryover, um, folks usually have to spend it all, which is sometimes very challenging to do mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so in my mind, I was thinking like, we can put back the funds in the areas that we cut, like some of the safety programs, uh, the uh, transient program we wanted to launch to working with some of our transient residents. Um, there was some other areas that I would well, recommend. Um, we, have, we have an ongoing conversation in the commission about where we really wanna spend money, you know, yes. in the different parts. And I noticed that one item is on our agenda for today, and that is our chair is going to be bringing up the issue of the viaducts. And is that possibly an area where we would want to look at spending money, some of these TIF funds? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I well, think so. Right, it's totally up to you all as commissioners. Mm -hmm. If I can butt in here, I think we have to do something that's demonstrable. I don't, not, you know, and, if you really want to get this thing reconstituted, I think you have to show, you show me the money, you know, show me what you've done. And I, if we don't do something demonstrable, you know, that's a very visible and demonstrable, then I, you know, I don't know how people are going to say, hey, yeah, I want more of this. Okay. Diane, can you just suggest a process for us to make these decisions? What's the next step? Because we only have, you know, a couple weeks. If I know, um, well, in my understanding, because I've never had to do this before, you know, with the TIF, this is the first time we've ever had a TIF rebate. Um, my recommendations is that we um, take some of the suggestions that we've heard today. We perhaps put some of put that in that TIF surplus into an infrastructure category. And then um, we start to, I guess, break down what are the things we want to do. How about, 
how about this plan yeah these are big decisions and i don't want us to be making um, right now like it's yeah sloppy on it talk through it can we set up a meeting friday for any commissioner who wants to attend as sort of a budget meeting conversation about like wait what are the, what are some of the projects we would want to fund and after that friday meeting um we should i'm sure there'll be a little homework and we can circulate a revision to the group and then figure out what to do mm -hmm. and we will have to um at some point before our next meeting we're gonna have to have a a full commissioner meeting just to vote on on this right correct Okay. Does, so does the budget draft have to be voted on, George, or is it just a draft that goes to SharePoint? Um, I I feel I like the know. final for sure. I think at the final definitely the draft. I it was my understanding could be uploaded at any point, but it does. It's the one that's going to go before city council that has to be approved by the commission. But Karen can probably answer that better than me. But she, <laughs> she's tied up. <laughs> well. Okay, whether it requires an approval or not, I guess we, we have some time to figure that one out, but we should still have that meeting just so you guys can all see and weigh in if you agree with the what Friday's group comes up with. Okay, Diane, did you have, um, we only have a few minutes left, but I think you want to talk about the audit real quick. Oh, well, the audit's complete. It was shared at our and approved at our last meeting. Um, we will be meeting with the auditor to discuss um, processes, um, but I don't think there was any additional okay. um, conversation at this time, but it has been shared with the city. Cool. Well, there was um, no um, findings or anything. Great. All right, then. Um, I'm going to take the moment then to, to talk about viaducts. Um, so, um, I think, okay, let me, I think, okay, excuse me, you are, yes. have, I'm sorry. Um, Mr. Devlin. okay, Mark, I'll call you back. Okay. Okay. I was getting some clarity on your money. Um, so we are being flexible. You can spend it on anything other than tab six and seven. Okay. Um, because you're going to have a hard stop, Diane, in 2023, and you know why, because you're moving over into potentially bids, um, you have to spend it because you'll, you're not as, you're not SSA 61, if you will. I don't, I'm not saying that right. Well, we are going to be beginning reconstitution, so we have a right. small decision. If we are going to go to the bid model, or if we're okay. going to, we are proceeding with reconstitution of the SSA. Okay. So he's saying since because there's nothing been finalized on that level. Exactly. So since you um, technically would have a hard stop in 2023, you do have to spend it all. Um, and so again, that 25% carryover is going to be an issue um, because you don't want to lose any money in this regard. So again, you can spend it all with flexibility. So Correct. we won't be carrying over any of the TIF money in 2023. Right. What we are going to carry over is okay. from yep. Great. one yep. that we so have held to get for the constitution and maybe we won't, maybe, you, you know. Would you mind if, if go ahead, Greg. Can we sort this out offline? I want to, I want to end this meeting on time and keep moving forward, but please, would you connect offline with, Miss, Mrs. Good, so we can have a good meeting on Friday. Great, thank you. Um, so heading in, as Nancy mentioned, we're gonna head into Constitution. We need to do something that people will notice, some sort of concrete example to show our taxpayers um, that, um, that we can make an impact. And one of the impacts is, um, is viaducts because if you're coming north uh, on DuSable Lakeshore Drive and you exit to go to Hyde Park, the first thing you see or second thing you see is the viaduct. So it's really your um, it's curb appeal. It's your first it's your first impression of the neighborhood. So we want to set the right impression. Um, and I'm gonna, you know, let me just share my screen real quick. That I think would be easier. Share. Okay. So can you guys see my screen? Not yet. Let's see here. Okay, so I took. Uh, what do you, what do you guys see on your screen? 
Do you see the viaduct? Yes. Yes. OK, great. All right, so I took this picture a couple of days ago. It's tired looking. It's, it, it signals to me, we don't care. I mean, that's sort of like my impression of entering Hyde Park when you see um, chipping paint. Uh, so any low hanging fruit, let's repaint this. Let's, um, so it's, it's back to its normal self. So we show, um, so we can show, I think that we care, but I, I'd like to take this further. Um, I'd like to actually create a, a pleasurable viaduct experience, something that would connect East and West Hyde, East Central and East Hyde Park. So we can pull more shoppers into the central district and we can, you know, the office workers who are working in the central district might have a, a nicer lunch break if they can walk to the park or to the lake. So um, if we do it with lights, we get to, you know, lights improve safety. And um, also uh, lights are, I think, a lot more affordable. So this is um, what, what I am thinking is we take this sort of experience from the left, which is like dark and sort of a little foreboding um, and we create an art installation. So I'm not proposing this actual artwork. Um, these lights might look something completely different. I think we should, um, we should get the experts involved, which would be um, some local neighborhood artists or most likely uh, Hyde Park Art Center who can run an RFP process for us and, and help us select the right artists who can do this type of light installation. Um, and then it would be on us to, to help the artists execute on the plan. So um, what do you guys, what do you think? I agree wholeheartedly with that. Say again, Anthony. I agree wholeheartedly for that. I love it. Like we've been having these conversations about the viaducts and lighting. I love it, Greg. Thank you for sharing that visual. Um, this is Shaka. No, I completely agree. Some of our, I mean, obviously I'm part of the viaduct, but you know, <laughs> our clients have complained at times about safety and lighting issues so um i guess selfishly um definitely love that idea and i do know that people talk about safety when it comes to the viaducts so and one of the other issues with the viaducts is they're so dirty um if we could like marry the two uh, uh the in increase the cleaning of the viaducts at the same time that we do the installation that would be helpful OK, um, it's nothing that we need to vote on today. I just didn't want to get too far ahead of my skis. You know, there's a lot of work to do. Um, but I, I didn't really want to start conversations with the alderman or um, map out a plan unless I knew this is what the, the group was supportive. So yeah, and if we're all in agreement that this is the direction, then that will help us on Friday. Um, make sure that we budget that TIF rebate funds correctly. Can we also include something like um, under the 53rd Street Viaduct uh, water collects? Can we get some kind of um, infrastructure work done there too as part of this? Because if water is always splashing up on the installation, uh, well, I know you're, it's, you're talking about light, but um, the, the paint chips because it, it things damage it. Um, and if we could do a little more um, uh, maintenance work under there, I think it would be helpful too. Um, also the way the water uh, runs down the sides of the, um, of the viaduct, it makes the, the, the paint deteriorate. There's a lot of water that runs down those pillars in the center too. Yes, and keep in mind that this TIF rebate would be our input and contribution to how what we'd like to see, but there is other TIF dollars that have been allocated from our aldermen that to be spent on the viaducts. So 2023 is going to be our year to like do this big thing. I mean, it's come to fruition. Um, you know, it's amazing. 
I love Thank the you. idea. I just wanted to add that. But you know, the one the one piece that's going to be hard to puzzle out is who's responsible for what, because flooding is going to be streets and sanitation. Painting the columns is going to be metra. The sidewalls are probably going to be a combination of the, the ward offices and metra. And you know, everybody has their little piece of pie when it comes to those viaducts. And we can't just go in and do what we want to do with them. Yeah. To set the expectation, this is a long, this is going to take a while. Um, so I think for the next meeting, we, we should, um, some sort of menu for all the components that you guys have just mentioned, just so you could see what the potential costs could be and we can see how far we want to take this. Greg, in your research of the lighting installations, do you have any sort of range or order of magnitude on how much an installation like that would cost? No. Okay. It's a great question. I, I just I have no idea. Yeah, I. I just didn't want to take it too far unless I thought yeah, the group like sure. liked it. But key question. Yeah. No. I I think it looks. I think that's a great idea. Okay. Any. Dan. Be able to get those estimates fairly easy because if people remember the Viadoc study that we did, uh, we can reach back out to the people who did this for us and find out what are the costs in some of those things. But then this is a much larger, obviously, process with our elected officials and other monies but and stakeholders. But um, this is the direction that Greg, as the new chair, um, when he's meeting with our elected officials, he would like to you know, propose what this commission would like to do. Okay, uh, I'll provide an update next next month. Rod, um, do you have a quick update on programs? Yeah, very quick. Um, the farmer's market will be starting on the 5th, as George noted in the meeting, uh, in the minutes, not the 6th. Um, our contracts for both power washing and um, clean slate have been renewed. Um, I do have down here our program committee meeting. It's going to be June 3rd. I will not be here and Diane is going to preempt that till the next one. So um, we won't be having that program committee meeting on the third. Yeah. Okay, let me, let me make that clear. There's no program meeting on the third. Correct. Got it, okay. No, it's not the third, it's- Or is it? Seventh. It's the seventh. The seventh. Seventh. All right. Yeah, we will bypass this month. Okay. okay. And I will send out that cancellation. Okay. Let's, let's open up the floor to the commissioners for general questions or announcements. Um, one, one quick announcement. I uh, just want to remind everyone that Saturday is point day. And there will be events all day from nine o'clock to four o'clock on um, Promontory Point, including the blessing of animals by a local priest and dance performances <laughs> by various Hyde Park dance schools and art projects for children to do and tours and land, uh, historical examinations of the point. It's all free. Just come down anytime you're in the mood on, on Saturday and join the, the, the fun at the points. And then on Sunday, there will be a um, exhibition of Nancy Hayes photography at the Hyde Park Historical Society featuring the point. And that, again, is open free to the public. It's from two o'clock to four o'clock on Sunday. George, is there a, um, a calendar or, or something that tells what, what's happening when? Yes. Promontorypoint.org. All one word, promontorypoint.org. And they have this, the schedule of events up there. Okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to put in a plug for um, uh, perhaps increasing our budget with Clean Slate um, to to ramp up some of the cleaning, especially especially under the viaducts, because it sometimes it feels like it doesn't get cleaned even on the days it's supposed to. I agree. Yeah. If there's no further business. Um... Is there any objection to adjoining this meeting? Okay. Um, 
this, uh, well, our next meeting is June 28th. It's in the 11 a.m. meeting. And there being no uh, objection, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Have a great day.